How's it going, everybody? This video was filmed exclusively live on odds.com. The Die Hard MMA podcast can be seen. The full replay, we talk about UFC Vegas 16 from top to bottom with my special guest, Dan Levy, over on odds.com. Click the link below to check it out. So I know all of you have been waiting since the beginning of the show to talk about Dan's shirt. Here we've got the co-main <laughs> event, OSP, taking on my guy Jamal Hill, 7-0, and undefeated, and Dan rocking the Jamal Hill shirt, man. I'm just going to let you lead this one off. Talk to me. Firstly, a shout-out to my boy, Jamal Sweet Dreams Hill, for hooking me up with this shirt. Very, very cool guy. Um, I'm biased, obviously. I like the guy a lot, but I got inside info on both sides here because OSP actually did this camp in Atlanta, Georgia, where I'm from. I know exactly who we train with. I know his training partners. I know the whole deal. We'll get to that in a second. So what's been interesting about light heavyweight, Clint, is that all, all the top prospects finally took their first loss, whether it was Rockich, whether it was Reyes, whether it was Jimmy the Brute Crew, whether it was uh, Michal Oleg Zaychuk. I know you remember the hype Michal Oleg Zaychuk oh, had, whether it was Alonzo Menefield. Every single light heavyweight prospect has been humbled and has taken their first L, except for one, and that's Jamal Sweet Dreams Hill. Now, granted, this is his step up. This is his opportunity where maybe maybe he's not quite ready for a guy like Ovin St. Prue. Maybe this is, you know, that cutoff point where he does take his first L just like the other guys had to. But th this guy kind of stands out to me, man. I, I think that he brings something completely different to the table than all these other light heavyweight prospects. And let me explain what I mean. So oftentimes it's like, we got guys that knock people out in the first round, but then you got all these questions about, okay, but what happens if it goes past the first round? What happens if it goes to the mat? What happens if this, what happens if that in Jamal Hill's UFC debut, and we'll talk about the contender series fight too, which was amazing as well in uh, Jamal Hill's UFC debut. I mean, when you go out there and you land over a hundred significant strikes throughout a three round duration, and you have that kind of you have the same output as a bantamweight at light heavyweight and there's no slowing down whatsoever right away you get my attention and then there's the whole thing about oh but darko took him down six times and that that's what people like to talk about what i like to talk about is he got up six times as well jamal hill was never held down once in that fight. I mean, he's got the get up game. He can go out there and outstrike you for three straight rounds. And then we just saw in his last fight, he can knock people out in the first round too. So I think he's got the best of both worlds where he can be a, he can win these decisions with his output. I mean, like I said, when's the last time you saw a light heavyweight going out there landing over a hundred strikes? Uh, you know what I mean? In a three round fight, the way he did, um, his striking is some of the best in the light heavyweight division, the way he pops that jab, but he can mix up all the weapons. He's got high kicks. He's got body kicks. His knees are very, very devastating. Obviously the one, two, his money punch, that two is on point. But I love the fact that when he gets taken down, you know, he's not one of these guys that's signaling to the ref. Oh, he's just trying to lay on. He pushes down on the head. He gets back up and he gets right back to work. Also, in his regional uh, scene, this is a guy that actually went five rounds when he had only had three or four pro fights. So he already knows what five rounds is like this early into his career. So I don't think we should view him as just any, you know, 8-0, and 9-0 oh, oh guy. I think that we should show a little bit more respect because of what he's shown in these performances. Now, with Ovin St. Peru, he's training here in Atlanta under Muay Thai legend Manu Nito, who total badass. Shout out to Manu. Love that guy. And his main training partner for this fight is my boy, my friend, Douglas Usher. Now, Douglas Usher is a badass. Douglas Usher, he's got a good pro record. He's a big middleweight. He's a southpaw. He's, he's about six feet tall. So Douglas Usher was the perfect training partner for the Michal Oleg Zaychuk fight. Six foot tall, southpaw, you know, a little bit small for light heavyweight, could probably fight at middleweight. You know, a little bit more volume. Like that was the perfect sparring partner for Michal Oleg Zaychuk. Douglas Usher is not the perfect sparring partner for Jamal Hill. Douglas Usher is not six foot four. He's, he doesn't have an 80 inch reach like Jamal Hill. So I'm not convinced that O oh, Vince is getting the proper looks in camp for this fight. Again, Doug Usher, that's my boy. And Doug Usher, perfect sparring partner for Michal Oleg Zaychuk. Not the perfect sparring partner for Jamal Hill. 
I kind of view this like a uh, the Dominic Reyes versus uh versus Owen St. Prue fight where Look, I, Reyes had never fought anybody up until that point either. You know what I mean? It was just based off the talent and, and you know, the potential. And Reyes was kind of able to go out there, just kind of out-volume him a little bit. Some people say he knocked him out in the third. Other people say it was just a knockdown. But that doesn't even matter to me. I don't care what happened in the third round. I care what happened the 14 minutes and 59 seconds prior to that. And it, he just doubled him up on volume. And I, and I see uh, Jamal Hill coming out here and doing the same thing, man. Whether it's a first-round knockout, whether it's a three-round decision, whatever the case may be, I see Jamal Hill coming out here and showing why he's the brightest prospect in the light heavyweight division. He's a guy that I think, you guys might think I'm crazy just because you haven't seen it yet, but... I think he's got top five potential. I think that this is the guy that could go all the way. And uh, we're going to have to see what happens. Look, obviously, do I want Ovin St. Pru to full mount Jamal Hill and test test out his ground game like that? No, I don't. I don't want to find out what happens if Ovin's the guy with the second most submissions in light heavyweight history. It was the most until Glover Teixeira just tapped out uh, Tiago Santos last week. He took the I record. Love Glover, baby. So <laughs> now... Ovince has the second most, and he's actually tied with uh, Misha Sorkunov, who, by the way, turned down the fight with Jamal Hill, and with uh, the great Johnny Bones Jones. They're all tied in second place for five uh, submission wins inside the octagon. So I'm sure Ovins is. I'm sure Ovince knows that he's got to come out here try to take this guy down. It's just that it's easier said than done, Clint. I've seen the get-up game of Jamal Hill over and over and over again, and on the feet. I mean. Unless he gets caught with something big. I mean, with Ovens, it's one shot at a time. Whereas with Jamal, it's like seven to ten shots at a time. So I see him doubling him up, tripling him up, going out there, putting on a striking clinic, and either finishing or winning a lopsided decision. I see Jamal Hill getting the biggest win of his career Saturday night live at the Apex in Las Vegas, Nevada. Wow, man. There's a lot to digest there. The the short Part of the story is that I'm on the same side. I I like Jamal Hill a lot. As a person, he's a very refreshing character for the UFC. You love to see people that you know act and talk and have their own swagger. And uh, like you said, there's been a lot of prospects at 205 that just haven't quite been able to crack. And uh, Ovin St. Prue is kind of turning into a prospect killer yeah. at 205. And dude, don't talk to me about Michelle Lord Olegze Chuck. One of the like top three biggest bets of my entire life was Lord Olegze Chuck against one Ovin St. Prue. <laughs> yeah. And when he didn't get it done in the first round and got choked out in the second, I have just absolute nightmare flashbacks. Every time I got to tape an Ovin St. Prue fight and watch that one over again, it just, oh man, it kills me every time. But like you said, Jamal Hill is a different animal. Like OSP, uh, I'm sorry, not OSP, but uh, Michelle Lord Olegzechuk, the dude's got the output. He's got the boxing. He's got the hand speed. But he's a small 205-er. Ovin St. Pru, we saw fighting Big Ben Rothwell, is not out of place at heavyweight. Jamal Hill is just as big as OSP is. And he's breaking records for output, like you mentioned. And I saw somebody in the chat got got a little feather ruffled when you said that he punches like a featherweight. Not with power, volume. He punches volume. like a featherweight with output. his volume. Yeah. Hill's got some power behind those punches, man. It's not like he's a pillow fister that just throws them out there. This kid can crack. We have seen OSP wobbled. We have seen OSP knocked out. I'm right there with you. OSP's one path to victory is going to be getting a takedown and locking up a submission because Jamal Hill, people want to talk about the Darko Stozic takedowns, but you mentioned the get-up game. Darko could not keep this man down. His takedown defense probably needs a little bit of work, but he does not settle for a downward position. He does not lay on his back. He works immediately back up to his feet and makes you work to stay on top of him. I do think he's going to crack OSP. I think if he gets taken down, he'll be able to stay safe and get back up to the feet. And OSP is slowing down, man. I mean, he's 37 years old. The day is coming where that cliff dips off, and I just don't think he's got the gas tank to keep up with a guy like Jamal Hill. Unless he gets it done on the very first takedown attempt and chokes him out the first time their butts hit the floor, I think it's going to be Jamal Hill with a second-round TKO. Real quick, someone thought I said that Jamal Hill hits soft? They, when you said featherweight, when you said he strikes like a featherweight, I no, think no, they no, interpreted no. that as, my, as soft my friend, punches. My friend, <laughs> I said he's got the output 
of a featherweight, as in he can throw over a hundred strikes in a three round duration. I never said my boy Jamal hit Jamal Hill hit soft, so don't misquote me. I just wanted to set the record straight. I wanted to make sure people understood. Cause yeah, man, I, I'm a fan of this dude. He's got some pop in his punches. And I think there's a lot of recency bias coming off of that Alonzo Minifield win, man. I, I dodged a bullet with Alonzo Minifield and OSP because the first time they matched that fight up, I bet Alonzo Minifield. And when they scrapped that fight and they rebooked it the second time, you know how you just get that sixth sense, that that spider sense tangling on the back of your neck? I stayed off of it the second time around for some reason. Can't put my finger on what it was. And OSP being able to you know, outlast Alonzo Minifield's gas tank, which we've seen is not something unique to OSP. It seems to be a problem for Alonzo Minifield. But him being able to outlast the gas tank and then end up getting himself a, a nice win in the second round, I think people are looking too much into that. You know, Jamal Hill is never going to slow down. There's going to be no opportunity for this man to get ground on or or have that gas tank get emptied by a guy like OSP. If anything, OSP is going to be the one that slows down when Hill cranks up the volume, in my opinion. I can see it happening. I think that Jamal is going to take uh, Ovens to a little place he likes to call Touch Him Up University. So let's see what <laughs> happens uh, Saturday night. All right. All right. We've got some good... Good stuff from this fight's card. Once again, we are joined by Dan Levy, host of Best Fight Picks, Half the Battle. Hanging out with us here, we're about to talk the main event for UFC Vegas 16. This is odds.com. We've got 380 live viewers hanging out with us this evening, so thank you all very much for being here. Make sure you smash that like button for me and share the show out there. 